Hey, what's up? Welcome back to our channel. My name's Samuel. And I'm Amanda. And this is the Samuel and Amanda show where we talk about money, marriage, and life. So, what have you been up to this week? This week's been fun. I've been furnishing and dressing some houses, as you know. So it's been quite busy and different for me, quite exciting. I've even had your input on some of yeah. them. <laughs> market so, research, right? Yeah, Samuel did some market research and he suggested some colours that I was like, mm, I'm not sure, but actually I think it turned out quite nice. And I'll credit where it came from. The market research actually came from JL Spooner. Okay. Because she rented out, she said that she had three rooms. One of them had this particular green paint. And she said that room everybody wanted and, they, and it, she could have rented it like 10 times over. I thought, hmm, interesting. So, you know, <laughs> We, we kind of like played around, yeah. did some market research, have to shout out to JL Spooner. We used the paint and it's been a treat. It's yeah, worked out really it well. It's really good. Rented actually. the rooms out over and over. So um, so you've been what, like frantically, where, 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 do yes. you order, where do you order stuff from? Oh my goodness. Just here, there and everywhere. Um, do you use your like interior design, um, what was it, your, your certificate that you got? Your my in certificate, my interior design certificate. I mean, I used some of those skills that yeah. I learned, which is quite cool. Uh, so that was really good. And then also I got to meet, finally, a lot of your students that I see on your Zoom calls. So from yes. five in person yes. at the Crash Courses. That was really, really fun. I met lots and lots of girls, lots of ladies in property, which is really, like really a, cool. Like Patricia Kilty. Yes. Like Amelia. Like, um, oh, Annalise. Yeah. Alexandra. There's loads of ladies. Graziella. Graziella, oh, wow. yeah. So, so yeah, So because we've been in lockdown for the last 18 months, You've been seeing them on the yeah, virtual Yeah, I've seen them on courses. the screen, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. Well, I, I've been um, running the courses, eating meat and vegetables still. So now <laughs> is the, I've got two more days of meat and vegetables and fruit only, and then it would have been a full month with zero carbs, which has been amazing. Um, and I've been working on some top secret stuff, <laughs> which I cannot talk about. Otherwise, I'd have to remove the video. <laughs> <laughs> but come in real soon. If you watch the if you watch the uh, Winners Wednesday come in this week, you will know it's going to be just insane. All I'll say is, you have no idea. But you need to subscribe to this channel and watch what's coming this week on the content because it's just going to be ridiculous. But apart from that, absolute top secret. So today, what we're going to be talking <laughs> about is one of the questions that I. People, not ask me, but they tell me, one of the things people say to me a lot is, they say, Samuel, after seeing your videos loads, um, it's really weird because you're actually nicer in real life <laughs> than you are on your videos. That's what people often tell me. Interesting. It is interesting, isn't yeah, it? They're yeah. often shocked, as if they think, they think I'm gonna be a jerk or something. I think something. it's because you're so hard, aren't you, and so direct. So I think when people see you, they just think, I don't know that you're in that mode all the time, but yeah. I don't think so often good. people say that they were pleasantly surprised when meeting <laughs> me for the first time. So on this video, I wanted to talk about some of the people that we've met and talk about what our experience, maybe famous people, um, what <laughs> our experience has been meeting them. Have they been like what we think they would be like, nicer or less nice? So I'm gonna go first with choice of celebrity and okay. then maybe I'll give you someone, you give me someone okay. and, and, and then we'll see how we go. So what was it like meeting in person? I'm gonna start with a really hard one. Oh, go I'm gonna start on. with a really hard one because okay. you won't want to talk about this, I don't think. Um, I'm gonna start with Robert Kiyosaki. Oh, Robert Kiyosaki. It okay, like? it was interesting. Interesting. I think I was quite a bit underwhelmed. I think it was like a dinner setting that you know it was a really close, intimate thing, and you're actually interviewing him. Yeah. So I don't know. I kind of thought he'd have a bit more life in him. I thought he'd be a bit more energetic and just I don't know, really friendly. Yeah, I thought he'd be really friendly because he's an older person, and I just always think older people usually are quite friendly. I remember like saying Like a nice to you, little granddad type, you know. <laughs> I, I met Robert Kiyosaki a few times, and I remember saying to you. I don't think he's going to be an easy interview. <laughs> and you were like, he will be. Yeah, I thought he'd be such a soft Cozy kid. granddad. <laughs> yeah. Cozy granddad. But no, he's a savage. Robert Kiyosaki is a savage, yeah, isn't he? And yeah. he's very blunt. Um, I think as well, it depends what day you catch him. Because I've seen him a few <laughs> times. Sometimes he's been friendly and nice. Other times, he's not been quite so nice. He's not a nice guy. Right. He's not. Would you, I mean, he's not I a mean, nice guy. I mean, I don't know. He just seemed a bit rude and a bit off. But he's, maybe it was just a bad he's day a walking, He's a walking legend. Yeah. And he's got a lot of wisdom and I have a lot of respect for him. But yes, 
Be warned, if you meet Robert Kiyosaki in person, <laughs> do not expect a friendly, nice conversation. You won't get a cuddle. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you won't. Like he will ignore cousin. you or he will be rude to you or whatever. And also he'll never remember you no matter how many times, no matter how many times you meet him, he'll never remember who you are. Um, but so, I guess sometimes in business to get to that point, you kind of have to be a bit like that. Maybe people expect me to be like in person what Robert Kiyosaki is actually like yeah, in person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's like total businessman, just, you know. Yeah. Okay, I have one for you. Okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger, what was he oh, like? Oh, my goodness. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I didn't meet him in a super intimate setting. I met him at, um, it was like, I think, you were there actually, weren't you? I was you? there, yeah. It was, um, so, so, so there was a dinner and a big Q&A, he did a speech, but then I did meet him backstage very briefly, had a photo with him. Uh, however, he, from what I saw, the small amount that I saw of, Ar of Arnold Schwarzenegger was absolutely awesome, really nice, humble guy, a real presence about him as well. You know, I think that's yeah. the thing as well. Like sometimes you meet people that you see on, on TV or on YouTube or on stage or you know, you've looked up to them for years and then when you meet them in real life, they've got no presence about them. They've mm -hmm. got no aura. They're just like, ooh, grumpy. Or, <laughs> where, where, whereas Arnold Schwarzenegger had a real presence about him and humility about him mm -hmm. and a kindness about him. So yeah, mad respect. I wish, I wish I'd have had longer to actually talk to him because it was, you know, it was all a bit busy, but yeah. yeah he seemed nice. He nice. Seemed nice. Great guy. Yeah. Not just nice, powerful, mm. inspirational, kind, humble, nothing but amazing things to say about Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I really respect where he came from. Yeah, yeah. I loved his story when he told his story. It was just really, really yeah. gripping. Okay, my one for you is... The embarrassing story. Oh, I know where this is going. I know. <laughs> the embarrassing story of the time that oh we met your hero, Mr. Kevin Hart. <laughs> Kevin Hart. If you're watching this, Kevin, I love you so much. You're so good. <laughs> but yeah, Kevin Hart, he was just so friendly and so nice. I think everything that I thought he would be yeah. he was that. He was everything you thought he would yeah. be, but you were everything you thought you would not be. I know. Be. I was so nervous when I met him. I just can't believe here's how the, I Here's was. the funny thing. Basically, oh. <laughs> Mandy always said to me, she goes, do you know what, Samuel? <laughs> if Kevin knew me, me and Kev knew each other, <laughs> we would be mates. We've got the same humour. True. We're like the same person. <laughs> Me and Kevin would be bezies. And I was like, okay, so uh, he was doing a big tour and <laughs> I arranged to meet Kevin in the VIP backstage area after yeah. the show. Uh, I think, I can't remember exactly how it worked now. I think you had to pay like, I don't know, a few thousand yeah, pounds. Yeah, that front row literally was yeah, there. And then, you, was and cool. then you could just meet them afterwards. And yeah. I think it was limited to like five or six people. Yeah. Um, and we did. And we went, and we and I was like, "Hey, we're going to Kevin's show. You were really excited about that." And then I told you that you were actually be meeting meeting him. You get to have a proper conversation, photos, chat with him, and you were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." But then I actually, know. oh my gosh, I couldn't, I couldn't even get my words out. You were quite underwhelming. Nervous. I know. Kevin I was, would have been disappointed. He probably doesn't remember me now because I wasn't memorable at all. Oh, you were, you were. <laughs> but yeah, really good experience. Really, really he good. He was really nice. We definitely go see him again live. And um, and and, and she. she she was showing him pictures of our children. He was pretending to be interested. <laughs> <laughs> I think he. I think he genuinely was. And if he wasn't, he. he it still came across as if he was. If he like, was oh. interested, then he's the strangest man ever <laughs> to be interested in pictures of some uh, random person's kids. He kid. was just yeah, really, really good. So yeah, okay, one for you then. Yeah. Someone who I actually admire a lot, and I haven't had the. The what's the word I'm looking for? Opportunity. The opportunity to meet them yet. Go on. Grant Cardone. Have you not met Grant Cardone? No, I haven't. I haven't. You must have met no, Grant Cardone. No, you've met him loads, but I've never been there. <laughs> have you ever even seen him live speak nope, on stage? No, no, no. Just my read his books, goodness. but never actually met him. Okay, Grant Cardone. So tell me what he's like. Yes, lots to say about Grant Cardone. Yeah. He's the opposite of Robert Kiyosaki in terms of. Robert Kiyosaki is a bit harsh on camera and a bit gruff and stuff, and then you meet him and he's even worse. Okay. And he's like, oh, right. Grand Cardone is kind of like in your face, a little bit aggressive and okay. stuff like that. But actually, in real life, he's one of the sweetest, nicest, kindest people you'll ever meet. Wow. Really, really, really cares about other people. Very calming. You know, yes, he's got really good energy and he's a bit hyper and stuff like that, probably a little bit like me. Yeah. But he is 
just, I remember the first time I met Grant was when I was interviewing him on my YouTube channel. Uh huh. And I just interviewed Robert Kiyosaki. <laughs> and because I just interviewed Robert Kiyosaki, and Robert Kiyosaki was a jerk, okay? I'm just gonna say it as it is. He was a jerk. He was the hardest person to interview ever. Okay. Um, but then I was thinking, like, oh, and I, and, I, and I kind of wasn't looking forward to interviewing Grant. I've never met him before. I just thought, is this going to be another frigging grueling interview? Where, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be like getting blood out of a stone. <laughs> but actually, I sat down with Grant and it was absolute night and day. It was absolute opposite. He was very, very sweet, very easy to talk to. After the interview finished, he was, he was chatting with me uh, when the cameras turned off. It was really complimentary about me and my business and YouTube channel. It was just really nice. Didn't charge a penny. Did it just purely um, because he he wanted to. <clears throat> and after that, we became friends and he became my mentor. I paid him a bunch of money. And um, no, I really like him. Mm. Very, very, very nice guy. Really cares. Direct to the point, but sweet and with a good heart. So nothing but good things to say about Grant Goddard. No. Nice. Which takes me to my next mentor. <laughs> Who I never actually said was my mentor, by the way. Oh my gosh, ever. I said that uh, I said that uh, I had a mentoring session with him, which I did. But um, Mr. Mr. Alan, L Lord Alan, Lord Sugar. Alan Sugar. Oh what my What do you think? Goodness. What do you make of What do you make of Alan Sugar? To be honest, I think he's literally just a grumpy old man. I mean, I, literally the other day, I showed you a tweet that he tweeted about someone. It was about Martin Lewis. Just a really nasty tweet yeah. out of nowhere, totally unprovoked, and I just thought. Who's happy in their life? Didn't he say? And like, does didn't, this? Didn't he tweet just the other day where he was like, oh, oh, oh hasn't Martin uh, Lewis? I really want to punch his face. Yeah, yeah. He said, oh, I've just got a face that I want to punch. I was like, who he says just that? Literally just literally That was all. That was his whole tweet. Yeah. Just I want to punch yeah. Martin Lewis's face. I, I, I was just like, wow. But yeah, he just comes across as a bit grumpy. I can't imagine him as being quite friendly and stuff. But you obviously met him. Yeah. What did you think of him when you met him? I actually, I actually liked him. Did you? Yeah, I actually liked him when I met him. Um, uh, he was very similar to like what he's like on camera. Uh -huh. He was, you know, grilled, grilled my business plan. But then actually, we got on really well. That's what surprised me so much when he started, um, you know, being a jerk afterwards. But we, we actually got on quite well. Yeah. And, and I shared my business plan. Everybody else, he was really horrible to. But actually, to me, he was quite nice to me. He liked my <laughs> business plan. You know, he really helped me change things. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> Lord Sugar is a grumpy old man. But yeah. I do. Think. I do respect him. He's achieved a lot. Yeah. And you know, not like uh, I, t I tell you, who is who is somebody that I do not respect at all. Who? Who's been in the newspapers recently as well? So this is a bit relevant. Uh. And that is um, Joe Lysett, the comedian. Oh. He's just he's just a tool, isn't he? He's just an idiot. He's just an yeah. idiot. What's he been in the papers for? I don't think I've seen. Did you, have you not seen? No. Well, well, he was in the papers for. He was basically he said that you shouldn't have I can't remember exactly what it is but certain plastic type bottles okay and then he got called out on live TV and they showed a picture of him where he had the bottle and then he walked out he took his mic off and walked out <laughs> and it was really awkward and he, he looked really stupid but then he then came out saying oh it was all staged it was all planned I was doing it just for attention how convenient but it's like well if you were if you weren't you're a tall man and then and then he said about me he was like oh I um I spent three months trying to meet Samuel and all this. He never messaged me once. Yeah. And then he was all, all nervous. And then came in. He was just a tour. Everyone hated him at my show. He came down to the crash course. Everybody hated him. He was getting booed and stuff. Um, <laughs> he is just the most unfunny comedian. And he's just a really... Um, I just... I, now, talking of punchable face, Lord Sugar, you can punch his face. That's <laughs> fine. So, uh, wow. final person. Give me okay. somebody. Hopefully somebody Ooh, good this think. time. Let Hopefully somebody think. good. I don't want to just bash everybody. Okay. Um, okay, you've met yep. Gary Vaynerchuk, haven't you? Of course. And yep. tell tell us then about the experience, because again, yeah. I've never met him, never actually seen him live. Gary Vaynerchuk. I met Gary Vaynerchuk. We had a, oh, it was called like a 4D, where a 4D, okay. I think it was, like where you pay like 10 grand and you sit around a table with Gary Vaynerchuk and uh -huh. spend a day looking at your business plan and, you know, it was cool. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk is very similar like you probably expect him to be. He's really high energy. He doesn't listen to what you're saying. He cuts you in constantly. <laughs> I, it was so difficult just asking him questions because I go, right, my question Gary is, but, and I'd start to ask the question and then as I'd be like 20 seconds into my question, he would then just cut me and he'd have some idea. Oh, and why do I feel like, I feel like he's the kind of person that always has to be the loudest in the room. I don't think he, I don't think it's an ego thing. I think it's because he's got so much to say. Right. To be fair, a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. And his mind is running a million miles an hour and you're 
he'll start to say something and then he'll be like, oh, that reminds me, or oh, actually, talking of that, and he just constantly cuts you okay. and stuff. But actually, I think he's got a really good heart and I think he's extremely intelligent. Okay. Very, very good at business and entrepreneurship and I loved it and he really supported me on my very first financial freedom challenge. Because when I met him, I was about to do it, and he was like rooting for me, mm -hmm. generous with his time, happy to. He was very, very nice. Like Gary Vaynerchuk, got a lot of respect for him. Don't know him super well. Only had the opportunity to meet him um, once, mm -hmm. but it was a proper meetup. And I can only really say good things about Gary Vaynerchuk. Nice, cool. Okay, just um, as we wrap it up, who would you? Because these people that you've mentioned, you obviously yeah. met them all in a, a business type setting. Yeah. Who would you, like, I met Kevin Hart because I just love Kevin Hart as a comedian. Yeah. Who would you pay to meet who's not, like, in the business world? Like, who's, who interests you? Like, who would you love to meet? Eminem. Oh, okay. good. <laughs> that would be, I, would that be fun? I, I can imagine that could be underwhelming. I'm not really sure. Okay. I don't know, actually. Meeting Eminem. I mean, look, I grew up an Eminem fan. So I think I'd be, love it. I think, oh, yeah, I would love it. <laughs> I would be very excited to meet Eminem. But I actually think I'd have a better afternoon. With Will Smith. Yeah, you love Will Smith as yeah, well. Yeah, Will Smith's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I nice. think, but there's a lot of people, man. There's a lot of people. So, yeah. we'll take some questions from the fans. Cool. From the audience. Let's see what Thanks we've got. For, and if you have any questions that you have burning, then you should comment them down and if, right now. And if also, if there's anybody that you think oh, we should get on this YouTube channel, uh, if you'd like to see maybe Amanda interviewing Kevin Hart or something like that, <laughs> then let, we'll see if we can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Emmanuel says, great watching you guys again this weekend. Samuel, I've got a question for you. How did you get your wife to start to work for slash with you? Did you ask her already what she wanted? Uh, 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 how? Organic, man. Um, with Amanda, she didn't need to come and work on the business. She was working as a quantity surveyor. We got married. She quit because she wanted to go on holidays and stuff and she didn't want to be tied down to a job anymore. And then you just naturally just started helping the, working on the business. Yeah, as but it then, happens, I, I've got an interest in property anyway. So, but then Amanda's help became like the business. Then suddenly, the business suddenly like stopped, had, had steroids, <laughs> you know, and blew up because Amanda's a smart, a smart <laughs> lady. And then it says, "Have you always wanted to work in the property sector?" Oh, this is a question for you. Okay. Or have you got other dreams outside of property. Oh, okay. Um, so I enjoy working in the property sector, but a random dream of mine, which I'm sure I'll have at some point, is to have my own clothing boutique. I just love the idea of it. And it's just something that I think sounds like a bit of fun. I might do that as a hobby as I get older. I Another know. dream that you've had as well is you keep talking about you want to have a nail shop, right? Yeah. A nail salon. Like a, yeah, like a nail spa. You just come, chatting with girls, having your nails done, having a glass of champagne, that sort of thing. I just, yeah, basically somewhere. I love, I just love the idea of people just coming in, having happy customers all the time and just being able to serve people and make them feel relaxed. Okay, next question. <laughs> what is the definition of a multimillionaire? Quite a few people in London, etc., are classed as millionaires by virtue of owning a house. This is James Green, by the way. Are you a multimillionaire if you, say, own £10 million in property but have £9 million mortgaged? Come on, Mandy, what's a multimillionaire? A multimillionaire? So, if you take someone's assets, everything that they own, minus all their debts, and then what they're left with, their net worth, if that's a million, then that's, they're a millionaire. If there's multiple, like if it's like a lot more than a million, then they're a multi-millionaire. So, so how many would it take to be a multi? I would probably say a multi. I mean, I've heard, I guess technically, I guess technically three, right? Yeah, I think three. I think it, a it, couple's it, two, and then multi would be three or more. Yeah, if you're, if you're, uh, if you've got three million pounds net profit in your, in your portfolio or business or whatever, then that's multiple. So I would probably say you're a multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. um, so if you've got 10 million but 9 million mortgaged, you are not a multimillionaire. You, you are, are in fact a millionaire. A millionaire. <laughs> Last question. Quite a few people said they wanted to hear about the charity stuff in terms of me saying that chari certain charities um, actually, or certain charitable works actually hinder people as opposed to help. Okay. Um, I don't really think we've got time to talk about that this week. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna, I think we should probably maybe talk about that next week because there's a lot of examples that I've got where um, that, that is the case and I could end up talking for another 20 minutes. <laughs> um, but anyway, 
I hope you've enjoyed this podcast of Samuel and Amanda's show talking about Money Marriage Live, who we've met and what we think of those people. Any questions at all, comment below because we will answer your questions in next week's video. And to wrap up, Amanda, what are your final words of wisdom? <laughs> okay, final words of wisdom. Supporting another success won't dampen yours. An example that I can think of that is actually just been being at the crash course and seeing you, Samuel. You are teaching people, training people, and sharing, you know, your success, sharing what you've learned. I feel like some people, when they become successful, they don't want to share mm. because they feel like, oh, I don't want anyone else to be like me. But I feel like you doing that doesn't take anything away from you. Yeah. So I think, like, you know, you should cheer other people on and not try to pull people down. And, you know, there's only good that can come from it. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Pulling, pulling, pushing other people up is actually gonna, gonna help you go higher yeah. as well. People that try and tear down other people to make themselves look or feel better it's actually completely illogical and does yeah. not work so keep inspiring other people keep spreading the love and the positivity and we will see you next time don't forget to subscribe like the video and thanks so much for watching thank you bye